One of the most fascinating aspects of the digital big data footprint is that it allows us to observe the social macro patterns that emerge on a higher level. And that's actually what social science is all about. We take this bird's eye view on society, look at it like one giant organism and see how it nurtures itself. Economists are very interested in how society satisfies its needs, how it governs itself. Political science does, for example, that. What are its customs? Anthropologists are interested about that and communication scholars are interested how communication flows in these social systems from often from a bird's eye view. And for example, here you can see a very interesting aspect of how information flows in society. In this visualization from J.R. Thorpe, you can see when somebody on Twitter says good morning or buenos dias, guten morgen, buongiorno. Now nobody did a survey here. This is just a digital footprint. People just say good morning on Twitter because they say good morning and you can you can study now society from this bird's eye view. For example, you can see very clearly in this visualization that people on the East Coast of the United States get up a little bit earlier than people on the West Coast. And that has nothing to do with the time difference. It just has to do with the fact that people on the East Coast now get up earlier. The things and people on the West Coast sleep in a little bit. Here's another study also derived from Twitter data. If you're an anthropologist or a cultural scientist, you might be interested in languages spoken in New York. Now, if you have a couple of million dollars, go ahead and do a survey. Or if you don't have them, you can just look at Twitter data and you find out very interesting things. So these are the second languages spoken on Twitter. And you can see that here in Brooklyn, we have a Russian community down here and then here we in the green we have a Korean community and then here in between we have a couple of blocks and yellows of a Japanese community and you can clearly detect it you don't have to spend money on doing a survey the digital footprint allows you to do it and this digital footprint is so fine-grained that it almost allows us to redraw the maps of the world but this time not only the geographic characteristics of our planet Earth, but the social characteristics. So if you look at, for example, some maps in Africa and developing countries, they are socially quite empty still. So here you have a map from Monrovia, the capital of Liberia, from August 2014. You can see it's kind of like bleak and like back in the days when the first pioneers drew up the first maps of the oceans and the lands and the coasts. There are a couple of white spots, for example, in many African countries only about 40% of the children have a birth certificate. That means we don't know that more than half of the children actually exist. We don't have any registration of them. That's the reality that we have currently. But you can be sure that nowadays they have a mobile phone. So kind of like we see kind of like on the map mobile phones walking around, carried around by people that we don't actually have no registration of. But now suddenly we can see them because they carry around a mobile phone, right? And if we draw the maps, it would be kind of like the first map makers, makers back in the days when they didn't know anything. They would just say, there be dragons, you know, it means like we have no idea what happens there. But now we can fill in this blank. So in November 2014, you saw that's how the map looked. So going back and forth, you can see that only in a couple of months, you know, there is a big, big difference in the level of granularity that we could suddenly study society with. And that's due to the digital big data footprint. Additionally to learning and discovering macro patterns from a bird's eye view, the digital footprint also allows us to zoom in and better understand individual behavior. For example, you know that Google location services with Google Map, if you have a Google account, you can track uh, your movement, the, the movements that you undertake every day, registered through your mobile phone. And Google certainly tracks them. You gave them the permission and Google also allows you to see them yourself if you want to. The interesting thing is that studies have shown that human mobility traces are highly unique. Only four spatiotemporal points are enough to uniquely identify 95% of the individuals. That means only four spatial temporal points, four spa points in space and time. For example, here I have uh, the mobility of myself and four would be enough to be like one, two, three, four. That would already be enough. And they could with 95% prob probability identify that it's me who moves around there. 
Furthermore, they showed that the uniqueness of mobility tracing decays very, very slow, slowly. So hence, even coarse grain data sets provide little anonymity. That means if we blur your digital footprint a little bit, we try to make it more coarse grained, it decays very, very slowly. So coarse graining or blurring doesn't provide a lot of protection uh, in a sense that people still can identify your you individually and, and, and with very severe implications for privacy protection as well. So big data allows us also to learn a lot about the individual and its behavioral patterns.